Good morning. My name is Milbert Mariano, and I'm the Vice President for Academic Administration, and welcome to our final Community of the Year. As we get started, don't forget to check in via Canvas, and at the end, don't forget to check out. Today is the Educator of the Year and Faculty Awards Community, where we celebrate faculty achievements and name the 2020 Educator of the Year. But before we do that, let's catch you up on a few things happening over the next few days. We've got lots of great worship opportunities online for you during the week. On Monday, Pastor Rufo is doing weekly devotions available on Announce and the IG. Weekly prayer meeting. It'll be on Teams at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. At 8 p.m. on Friday, we have Vespers online with the new lead pastor at our PUC church, Chanda Nunes. Watch it at puc.edu slash YouTube. And Sabbath morning at 10 a.m., we'll have the morning watch also on Teams. Senate elections start today, right after community, in fact. You have 24 hours to vote, so please take a moment to check your email and elect your representative for student government for next school year. Student Life is looking for fusion leaders to learn more about this rewarding experience. Apply at www.puc.edu slash peerleaders. Don't forget to watch the announce board at puc.edu slash announce and social media for more. As we finish our final community brief for the year, I want to thank you for joining us to bring our community together. It's been a crazy year, but we've made it together and it's built us stronger than ever before. Thank you to the participants from our programs this year. Thank you to the crews that have put it on and thank you for joining us in building one PUC. For the final time this school year, welcome to community. And before we get started, PUC President Bob Cushman will be giving opening prayer. And after that, you'll hear from our hosts, Tammy McGuire and Asher Raboy. Hello, PUC, and welcome to another community. Today, as you know, we have the opportunity to recognize and celebrate several of our outstanding faculty and the work that they do with our students. So as we begin today, let's bow our heads together and invite God's presence. Father God, today we want to lift up our faculty here at PUC. They feel called to this ministry of education, Father, and as they follow your calling, they have the opportunity to not only share their expertise and mentor these students in their area of interest and content, but also, Father, in their relationship with you. So as we celebrate our colleagues today, we ask in a special way for your presence to be here with us, that the celebrations and honors that are bestowed on our faculty will represent the best of PUC and our faith in you. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Good morning, PUC. Welcome to this version of Community. I'm Tammy McGuire from the Comm Department. And I'm Asher Raboy from the music department. Hey, Asher, what is our mission this morning? Well, we're, we're going to go through all the faculty awards, and we're going to do it in 12 minutes or less. That's right. And we have one other mission. And what is it? To not be boring. And we're not sure we can pull off either one of those missions. Okay, so we know we have a bunch of smart people out there who've done all kinds of great things outside of the classroom, and we're going to show you their work that they're getting an award for, but you're going to have to read really fast, and here's what we've done to help you out. Well, well we've done everything because we don't know what this stuff's about either. Right, because so, we're not as smart as they are. Well, I'm speaking for myself, but we Google, we Googled, we Googled it for you, so uh, hopefully that helps. I don't think it will, because I have a knack of getting wrong answers, even with Google. Okay. Well, we're going to find out. All right. On our marks, get set, go. We may not be right, but we Googled it. Here's our first award winner, Eric Anderson. Well, he used to be, you know, he's the interim president. So now that he's not president anymore, he's had time to do a little bit of study. And here are his uh presentations and we looked at a couple of words and we decided to google them and here's where we first decided that we googled it for you might not work out just right i think we got those exactly on the money we i don't think so asher because 
this Desmond Ford thing is not, it's not the car and it's not the president. It's actually a person. And so we think that maybe if you're interested in that, you should go to Eric Anderson's new office when he's there and ask him about this because it sounds like uh, really interesting research. So congratulations to Eric Anderson. This is Professor Vola because I have, I don't have the skills to pronounce his last name, but Professor Vola, you're awesome. You know, it's not just the last name. I looked through all his publications. There's a ton of them. And I think there were two words that I recognized. These two, Asher? The, those two right there. <laughs> well, he has done a lot of work. I, think, I thought you would really like this one, right? With the musical harmony. Yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. But, but Vola does. Look at this one. Hey, we Googled something for you. We Googled that right there. Here's what we found. It's a real thing. And here's the team, except they didn't have Professor Vola in the picture. So we added that for you. So you're welcome. All right, let's go to our next person. Do you know who this is? That's Chantel. I wouldn't miss her anywhere. Yeah. That is right. And she did a presentation that I think she overheard me. I only know how to add whole, whole positive numbers. So that was a presentation. <laughs> and here was her other you. presentation. And I, I believe, Asher, you were in charge of Googling something here. I did. I did. I saw this great word, this geogebra, and there it is. I Googled it, and there's a geogebra. I don't it's think. I have to hear what half a, a zebra. I don't think you're right. I, I, I think it's this, Asher, which looks really, really cool. Um, I, thought, I thought the geogebra I had looked pretty cool, too. It was cool. It was cool. All right. Here's Allison Fox, assistant librarian, and we did not, we Googled our hearts out, and we could not find a picture of Allison there. No. This great presentation, but we did find a quote from her. She wrote, libraries have always seemed like a second home to me. So congratulations, Allison, for your, your presentation, and welcome home. Hey. You know what's sad about that, though? What? I always thought a second home should be on the seashore but I didn't see any ocean there. <laughs> There's no ocean anywhere, but it's lovely, isn't it? It is. Yeah, that's a great home, Allison. Hey, we took a picture of our next presenter's office, and this was on, this is in his door, and we don't know if Doctor Who has anything to do with his publications, but they sound, they sound pretty awesome, so congratulations, Victor Gaines, for these. Indeed. Yes. All right, all right, Asher, here comes a quiz for you. The quiz I'm has ready. two questions. You ready? Do you know what bird this is? That is a grebe. I think that is the correct answer. And part two, do you know who this is? That's a person hunting grebes. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's Floyd Hayes, who has like 17 slides that we're going to go through really quickly because he's done so much work. And look at all the grebes that are in his mini, mini publications. There, I'm gonna to go to the next slide. You know, I, I have to tell you, I know we're supposed to be funny, but he does more work all around the world every year. The list of publications is astonishing. Even if he looked really silly in that photo, this I, guy's a scholar. He is on, goes on and on. And you know, if, you, if you're if you fast enough, you can find actually people on campus like Peter LaCourt. I think there's, uh, there's some students in here, but such a lot of research, Floyd. Look, he's still looking for grebes. He's also <laughs> just he's he's also just kind of done a couple of talks elsewhere. So congratulations, Floyd. We always like it that you take up so many of our slides. All right. So our next presenter, Asher, you were supposed to um, you were supposed to Google it, and I I'm not sure. <laughs> That's oh, oh, no, that's a picture of him. I, I know it is. Yeah. All right, studio audience. Do you know who our next presenter is? I don't it's think clear. you were. Cats. No, I don't think you were right. I don't think you were right, Asher. I don't think that Google was helpful. But congratulations to Peter Katz for his nice article about rethinking evaluation through empathy. All right, Asher, I think, I don't know if this Google thing's working out for us. But here's oh, uh, Professor Logan, right? Assistant Professor of History. What words stand out to you as we look at those really quickly? You know, it's, it's technology, technology. He looks at history through technology, including India at time of the Raj. It's a fascinating set of topics. Awesome. Keep up the good work, Professor Logan. Here, this picture right here, we Googled this person, and this was a picture that came up, because this, I think, is where he'd rather be 
but here he is, our great <laughs> storyteller on campus, Paul McGraw. As you look at all the things that he's done, most of them are in Texas, we noticed there. Uh, don't you just want to sit down and listen to Paul McGraw tell stories? I could listen to him all day long. He is one of the great orators and storytellers of all time. Amen. And you know what? Notice this was the Ford crisis. It came up, it came up earlier, so it's a real thing. Well, you know what I think it is? I think it's when the Model A replaced the Model T. Wrong, Asher, but thank you for trying. You're, okay. I, I applaud your efforts here. Hey, this is me, so we have to be perfectly serious, right? Tammy, do you actually know what the titles mean in this one? I do, actually. I know all the words. You know all the words. Including the word burnout. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Tammy, it's always a pleasure to work with you, but I always am amazed at how much other things you do and, and how important your work is. This is fantastic. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Asher. I wanted to give shout out to the students who wrote that second paper. This is Alma presenting at the conference, so she was one of the student uh, authors on that paper. So we're always super proud of our student researchers. Okay, so this next slide we're about to see is probably where we're going to lose friends uh, because of this presentation. And probably, okay. yeah, probably why people are going to just be sad that they, uh, they allow us access to their Facebook accounts. I saw this picture on the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> It's, yes, it's our very own Hallmark <laughs> Hallmark star, Howard Munson from the History Department. Hey, here's another person who presented in Texas, so we've given him a star for that. I don't yeah, think but you gave him the Cowboys star. There's not a 49er fan who will forgive you. I know. He's. I think, I think we've just lost a friend, but congratulations, Howard. All Thank right. You. We recognize this guy. He's done a lot of work with uh, book reviews, as you can see, if you can read really quickly. Well, I was just saying, well, I really love this because I read book reviews just like they was books. And so um, I was glad to see all these book reviews. And, of course, it's also great to see Brian working on a subject that is um, about tarantulas or coral snakes. <laughs> he, he's a renaissance man, isn't he? Yes, he is. Congratulations, Brian. Oh, Indeed. Professor Halo of Social Work. Oh, Please look at her title very quickly. Asher, can you translate it for us? Well, I, I no, I cannot. But I Googled it because it's in Estonian, and I thought that Google knew Estonian better than me. And look what we found. It sounds fascinating. Congratulations, Halo. Keep up the good work out there. All right. Hey, we heard earlier today about Jean Sheldon being Professor Emeritus. Congratulations. And here's the things that she submitted. Look at all these great presentations and articles. I want to listen to all of them. And look at this one, Asher. Six talks. Yes. Six. But, see, this was the one that did me in. Because I have this Monet in my room. And after I listened to her talk six times about going from real to fake, I realized it's a forgery. So this <laughs> broke my heart. But she's very convincing. <laughs> she does. She makes a difference in people's lives, including yours. I'm glad to hear that. Yes, she does. All right. Rajiv Sagamani, professor of film. We Googled the second one just to verify what's going on here, right? So yeah. here's what we found. Yeah, it's a real movie. And it's a real movie poster, a film by, right there. Isn't that amazing? That is Congratulations, amazing. Rajiv. Rajiv, we verified this. We want to see the movie now, and we think all of you should see it as well. So get Rajiv's autograph next time you see him. All right. We, we're going back to the library. We've, we have uh, Katie Van Arsdale there. Librarians outside libraries, thinking outside the box. So we put her outside the box there, right? This is not yes. her second home. That's Allison's home. So. <laughs> That's right. And she wasn't invited in. Katie finds all sorts of fun things in the library as we've seen in previous communities. So keep up the good work, Katie, in or outside the box there in the library. Hey, look at this one. James Luberding from Theology. Here, what did we Google here? Well, it's this Andrews, Andrews Study Bible is so interesting. Um, why don't you call up a slide on that? Well, it must be so real because you can get it at Amazon. Isn't that amazing? 44.99 people, you go get it. And here's what we pulled out of the 
the description is a group of Bible scholars and theologians, of which Jim Weberding is one of them. Yay. Yeah, internet group. And for, at $44.99, it's a bargain. Look you, at okay. that. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. I don't think it's appropriate to autograph a Bible, but if it were, he, he would autograph it for you. Here's our last one, Ross Winkle. Let's look at what yeah. he did. Okay, here are his presentations. And what did we Google here? Well, I looked at these things about uh, cryptographic numbers and calculating the number of the beasts, and suddenly I realized with King Solomon, it's got to be a map to King Solomon's minds. So right. I can't wait to read these because I can get rich. Right, and that's Professor Winkle is probably already rich because he knows all the secrets. But we also thought it was really cool. Look at all the places he, he's gone to present here. Yeah. Well, that's our 18 win, uh, faculty award winners. We congratulate them all for their great work. Uh, well, all I can say is that these are great people, and we know that because we Googled it. <laughs> Amen. All right, everybody. Here's what we don't need to Google. Educator of the Year, you can't find it on Google, but we're about to discover, we're about to hear from the last year's Educator of the Year and discover who this year's Educator of the Year, year is. So hang in there. All right, thanks for spending some time with us. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. In just a few minutes, we're going to get the pleasure of discovering who the new Educator of the Year is going to be. But before that uh, time, I would like to just chat with you for a few minutes. When I was younger, my father gave me several pieces of advice, uh, but I'd like to mention three of those pieces of advice to you today to see if you might find those helpful. Okay, three pieces of advice. The first piece of advice that he gave me was, invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. That's the first piece of advice. The second was, prepare yourself and there will be a place for you. Prepare yourself and there will be a place for you. And the third is the race is not always to the swift. The race is not always to the swift. So let's take a look briefly at each of these. Invest in yourself, prepare yourself, and there will be a place for you. This is the idea of preparing in your abilities. Investing in yourself could be thought of as investing in yourself financially through education and the like. That certainly is part of it. But in addition to that, investing in, in yourself can be investing in the effort that it takes to educate and train yourself to do the work. Preparing yourself, and there'll be a place for you, is the idea that we may not know where we end up eventually, but if we prepare ourselves, there'll be opportunities and a place for us eventually. Finally, the race is not always to the swift, reminds us that we shouldn't really compare ourselves to others as we go on this journey. Some people that may seem and may be smarter and uh, faster than we are, if we are uh, consistent and we keep our uh, persistence going, we can indeed uh, succeed. The race is not always to the swift. So invest in yourself, prepare yourself, and there'll be a place, and the race is not always to the swift to the SWIFT. Now, academically, what, what might this mean? 
uh, if we think in terms of our academic uh, career. Well, one thing that I think of sometimes is salvation is free, but learning and education takes a lot of hard work. Salvation is free, but learning and education takes a lot of hard work. When we're learning, what are some of the ways that we can do it? Well, one thing is I suggest that you learn in broad categories, learn in broad areas. Uh, study history and English and psychology and science. Don't limit yourself too much, especially when you're on the college level. Learn more broadly. On the other hand, I think that it is helpful to pick a major or an area that is interesting to us and to try to excel in that area. Pick a specific field of study or area or classes and try to master those areas. By mastering a particular area, you will gain confidence and be able to succeed in life more generally. I remember I had a professor in graduate school and early on in the class, he made a statement that uh, was surprising to me. He said, by the end of this class, this quarter class, you should know this subject area better than I do. And I was rather surprised by that comment because here, this was his major field, this was his area, and here he's saying that I needed to know this area of study better than he does. Well, that was uh, something that stuck with me, and I realized that he was encouraging us to set goals and that we should aspire to actually learn more in these specific areas than even our teachers know. Now, when you're studying, practically, I would say learn and study and memorize on a daily basis. Train your brain and your mind to learn and study and practice on a daily basis. Make it get to the point where you can actually teach it to someone else on a daily basis. And then when you're coming to a test or a quiz, you're just reviewing that material. All right, well, let's switch from the academic side to more the spiritual side. How do we prepare for life spiritually? Well, I think one way to do that is to learn about the character of God. Learn about the character of God. Learn about God's character. And as we learn about the character of God, we do our best to represent his character to others. Learn about the character of God and then learn how to represent it to others. How do we learn about the character of God? Well, certainly reading and studying the Bible is an important way. But, you know, there's other ways to learn about the character of God. Have you ever been in the PUC Church Sanctuary and seen those big posters up on the front wall? At PUC, nature and revelation unite in education. Nature and revelation unite in education. So we should be not only studying the Bible, but we should be studying nature. And this combination helps us understand the character of God. Now there's one thing that we have to keep in mind here, and that is we need to accept that as we study different areas, even within the Bible or comparing the Bible and nature, we're never going to get complete harmony. There's gonna be some discontinuities. You like that word, discontinuities? We're going to have some things that don't seem to match up. 
think about it like a jigsaw puzzle. You're doing a big thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. Now you're going to have some pieces missing and you're not going to be able to fit everything together necessarily. But you will have enough evidence. You'll have a big enough picture in your jigsaw to give you enough evidence for faith and trust in God. And so not knowing every answer or how everything harmonizes should not inhibit us from trusting and having faith in God because we have enough evidence. The picture is big enough. There is enough harmony that we can see that. Remember to build your character in your life, not only for this current life, but also for the future life to come. This is only part of our journey, this life on this earth, and we, there's more to come. Finally, remember that service to others, helping others, is the best route to a happy and a rewarding life. Let's move to the exciting part of the day, and that is discovering who our new educator of the year is going to be. Look at that, I have this uh, super secret uh, envelope here, and uh, it has the name of the new educator of the year in it. And as we open this, we see that we're given three hints three hints as to the, who the new educator of the year is. Um, first of all, uh, see if you can figure out who the educator of the year is using these hints. Hint number one, this person has taught at PUC for over 20 years. That's hint number one. So that narrows it down a bit. Hint number two, this person teaches in an area different from their major in college. Hmm, that narrows it down quite a bit, doesn't it? Number three, this is gonna, really going to narrow it down. This person teaches in the biology department. Oh my, how exciting. Our 2020 Educator of the Year is Dr. John Duncan. Oh, my <laughs> <laughs> Yay. And there he is. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll go. What am I supposed Surprise. to do? <laughs> yeah. Surprise! Tanya, show us the certificate. Oh, there we go. Hey, hey. Hansi Duncan, PhD. <laughs> so what road did John Clark Duncan travel on his way to becoming the 2020 Pacific Union College Educator of the Year? He had a pretty humble beginning. As you can see from the very start, Animals were a big part of his life, and school was a place that felt like home. He was the oldest out of a pack of three brothers and eight cousins, and he learned how to have fun and plan crazy adventures. He attended Cedar Lake Academy, now Great Lakes Adventist Academy. He was on the quiet side, but he always had a smile on his face. He graduated in 1986 and headed to Andrews University. His interest in martial arts began at Andrews, and he eventually earned a brown belt in Taekwondo. He graduated from Andrews in 1991 with a math major, chemistry minor, and a secondary teaching credential that he decided not to use just then. He continued working in the print shop at Andrews for a year, then spotted a flyer for PhD programs at Loma Linda University. He actually had to take two life science classes at Andrews before Loma Linda would accept him into the anatomy program. 
Education seemed to transform John from a simple country boy into a mad scientist. He worked in a research lab at the VA hospital in Loma Linda, and he was involved in several research projects, both his own and his teammates. He graduated from Loma Linda in 1998 while already teaching and doing research at the University of Delaware. He was hired by PUC in 2000 and has taught here ever since. One skill that has served John well throughout his life is his uncanny ability to fall asleep pretty much anywhere. John found that going from a single man to a family man gave him a ready-made group of people with whom he could travel. He has visited St. Thomas, Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, several areas of Mexico, Honduras with PUC students, and more. The years at PUC have sped by. Both our kids attended PUCE, PrEP, and PUC, and both have launched into careers in the military. John never lost his interest in martial arts. He is currently testing for his black belt in jiu-jitsu and has been the sponsor and sensei of PUC's jiu-jitsu club for many years. Lots of Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday night classes and always delivering tasty treats at Fall Fest. John's crazy sense of humor has remained the same and with the same results. People either love him or they don't. Pokemon Go has become an unofficial PUC club as well. His love for animals has also persisted throughout his life, both when traveling and at home. Visiting Fiji with PUC students and then Australia with family last summer was truly the trip of a lifetime. And gave him an opportunity to dive the Great Barrier Reef. John was pretty devastated when COVID-19 disrupted his plans for his advanced anatomy class this spring, but it highlighted why he was chosen as Educator of the Year. He is using his flexibility and resourcefulness to still deliver top quality instruction. It might not be the road he would have chosen, but he is charging down it anyway. We can't wait to see where his next adventure leads him. Hi, I'm Congressman Mike Thompson. And I'm here to say congratulations to Professor John Duncan, Pacific Union College's 2020 Educator of the Year. Day in and day out, you show up for your students, Dr. Duncan. You're dedicated to their success. Your teaching is of the highest standard. Not only that, but your students themselves recognize your great work as a biology professor. Particularly in this, these uncertain times, educators like you are more important than ever before. So thank you for your hard work and congratulations on this award. Congratulations, John. Who would have guessed one year ago that we'd be here again? <laughs> <laughs> now I definitely know this educator of year thing is rigged. <laughs> It's hard to roast someone who is already so good at making fun of himself. To his credit, John has no problem being his true self, playing Pokemon, Pokemon Go on first floor of Clark Hall, showing students how to do dissection at home with household items, or playing his own version of Tiger King, John Exotic. Check out PUC Biology Insta. Students tell me they are afraid of him, and to be honest, for the first few years we worked together, so was I. <laughs> it was a fateful conversation about succulent plants some years ago that changed my mind. Most students who start a dung class can barely contain their terror. But by the end, if they survive, they respect him and many become his minions, or maybe Duncan's dunce. Hanging at his house for jiu-jitsu club moon nights, spending long hours in the anatomy lab, and or perhaps tagging along with him to a low orchid show, he makes himself available. Several years ago, the English department started a tradition, and I will continue it by reading an original acoustic. That's where the first letter of line of a poem spells out a word. 
in this case, John Duncan. Jiu-Jitsu brown belt, Obi-Wan Kenobi to me. He teaches by doing. No student can deny dissections are sometimes gross, unless you're taking anatomy online. Now our chance to raise his combat power and celebrate his victory because never gonna happen again. John, congratulations to you. You work tirelessly for PC and our students. Thank you for all that you do to make it a joy for all of us to work, see, and play in the biology department. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Woo! <laughs> so congratulations, Dr. Duncan, on winning Educator of the Year. <laughs> so when Jennifer and I were asked to speak to the quality of Dr. Duncan, a man who teaches anatomy by likening bone cells to gossips that communicate through canaliculi and molecular biology by asking such exasperating questions as, what do you really know about a membrane? We were befuddled. <laughs> and so we asked ourselves the question, an all important question when dealing with a man like Dr. Duncan. How do you define a man like Dr. Duncan? The following is a jingle inspired by that question. He feeds his fish and scrapes the dish to keep them from despair. He waltzes on his way to class and leaps right down the stair. And hidden by his scowling is a passion to be fair. I even heard him singing for anatomy. <laughs> He's always long lecture, but his vigor is so real. He's always long in everything except in a Pokemon deal. We hate to have to say it, but we very firmly feel Dr. Duncan makes the college brighter. We might glad a word on his behalf. Dr. Duncan makes us laugh. How do you define a man like Dr. Duncan? How do you harness cells to explain life? How do you find a hedgehog in the genome? You look to the left, you look to the right and down. Many a thing he's in store to tell you. Many a thing he'll help you understand. But how do you make him stay to explain it all the way? How do you keep an orchid alive? Oh, how do you define a man like Dr. Dante? How do you harness cells to explain life? I am Floyd Hayes. I teach biology here at PUC. So I have the privilege of working with John. We teach completely different subjects, but several years ago, I learned that John and his family enjoy scuba diving and they spend a lot of time diving in exotic locations. So I decided to invite him on a couple of my field biology classes. In 2017, we traveled to the Caribbean island of Roatan in Honduras, where we spent a week studying tropical biology and conducting a research project on the fish associating with sea urchins. I was amazed by how much John knew about fish and other marine animals. One of the highlights of the trip was going zip lining. John was fearless and acrobatic too. Another highlight was going on a shark dive with students Sean Richards and Christine Graham. We were closely approached by about 10 hungry Caribbean reef sharks, and one of the sharks swam between John's legs. In 2019, we traveled with a group of students to Fiji, where we spent a week studying tropical biology and conducting several research projects. John enjoyed many hours snorkeling while exploring the coral reef. He especially liked to blow bubbles, he said it was to keep the sharks away. We traveled by boat to a small 
rugged and remote island named Monoriki. It's the same place where some guy was once stranded for four years. But we made sure John didn't get stranded on the island so he could return and teach here at PUC. John enjoys hiking and exploring new places. John enjoyed an epic hike through the rainforest, crossing the stream several times until we reached a beautiful waterfall. John especially loves scuba diving. The highlight of our trip to Fiji was a shark dive with student Tori Lee, where we saw four species of sharks, including 30 hungry bull sharks. Some came in way too close. Luckily, I managed to get a photo of John with the shark. And fortunately for the students of PUC, he did not get eaten. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about one of our honored faculty members here at PUC. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for our college community, including our talented and inspiring students, faculty and staff. We thank you for the opportunities you have provided us here at PUC so we can enrich our lives with the joy and wonder of learning about each other, about the world we live in, and about the ingenious designer of it all. We ask for your guidance through this perilous period of time and that you will protect each of us and our loved ones from the plague that threatens our livelihoods and our lives. We ask that you will bless each student with wisdom, self-discipline, and success as they pursue their educational goals here at PUC. We ask that you will bless each professor with wisdom to share their knowledge in the most effective manner. We ask that you will bless all of our staff members whose services keep our college community functioning smoothly. And we ask that you will bless our administrators and board members with wisdom and making the best decisions for managing our college. We pray for the students who are graduating soon that they will be successful in finding jobs or furthering their education. And we pray that if it is your will, we can gather together once again as a community this fall. In the name of Jesus, we pray. 